Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome back to part three of CT evaluation of suspected renal masses, looking at key differential diagnosis points. And you remember in part two, we were talking about cortical medullary, or what I would call arterial phase imaging in 30 seconds. Now let's look at parenchymal or nephrographic phase imaging at about 70 seconds. Now, if you ask the question, can you detect venous involvement in arterial phase imaging? The answer is yes, but you will have an issue defining the extent because there are flow-related changes. One of the things arterial phase can show you, of course, is if the thrombus is bland thrombus or tumor thrombus at times because of the neovascularity present. But venous phase imaging is the phase that's best for determining renal vein or and IVC involvement. The accuracy of CT is in the high 90%, uh, probably seven, 97 to 99% accuracy for picking up renal vein or IVC involvement. And this article by Guzzo made that point way back when. Patients with renal cell carcinoma in whom CT fails to detect tumor thrombus are unlikely to have a tumor thrombus found at surgery that would change the surgical approach. So a very practical understanding. Good example here, hypervascular clear cell left renal cell carcinoma. You can see the tumor extension. Here it is nicely on the MIP imaging. You can see the neovascularity. Now this is not the best look for the left renal vein, but here it is on the volume rendering, nicely showing you the vascular tumor extending into the renal vein and from the renal vein into the IVC. Here's another example, again, early phase imaging showing you extensive thrombus in the IVC, but it's difficult to determine how far particularly down the thrombus goes because this may be simply unopacified blood. You can see renal vein and we know the IVC involvement is surely going to be up there. And then when you look down and you can see nicely here some more of the extent of the thrombus on the uh, volume rendered views. Here it is again showing you the two renal arteries, the thrombus, lots of the neovascularity. And then when you get to venous phase imaging, you really can see the true extent inferiorly, the extent into the renal vein, the extent up into the IVC. It's intrahepatic IVC, but it's not intracaval IVC. Another example here, clear cell invading the left renal vein. There's adenopathy present, extensive neovascularity shown. Uh, again, uh, we use a combination of volume rendering and MIP imaging. The MIP is especially good at looking at this neovascularity, looking at the AV shunting. Uh, and here, as we go to venous phase from coronal and volume rendering, the extension into the renal vein and renal vein into IVC is very nicely noted. And the extension is really nicely shown on the cinematic where the neovascularity in the left renal vein up to the IVC very, very clearly defined, as you can see it as we mark it there. ct is defined as the third portion of the exam. It's the uh, way of describing, basically, people would call a CTIVP, CT exam of the urinary tract before and after the administration of IV contrast. That includes excretory phase imaging. So I think one of the things we've gone through are the two earlier phases, right? Arterial phase, showing the ovascularity, help define clear cell versus papillary cell, show AV shunting, venous phase imaging, also defining the tumor well, and also very nicely showing you uh, whether or not there's renal vein or IVC involvement. And then, of course, delayed phase imaging. Now, I've mentioned before, delayed phase imaging is probably the best phase for looking at subtle renal infection. But delayed phase imaging is also critical, particularly if you want to detect transitional cell carcinoma. It gives you a more complete understanding of the extent of tumor, particularly helpful also in preoperative planning. Now, when you talk about excretory phase imaging, many people talk 8 to 10 minutes and there's a range of basically four to 10 minutes. I tend to like four to five minutes, typically about four minutes, because when you wait eight to 10 minutes, the contrast is really dense from being excreted and you have significant beam hardening artifact. And that creates significant artifact 
it's very easy to obscure small lesions in the calyces or the renal pelvis, and the 3D mapping is not very pretty because of this extensive artifact present. Now, if you told me it's a case of possible UPJ, I then would go at about eight minutes, but that's rarely the case. And so we're typically at that four to five minutes. So let's look at some examples. Transitional cell carcinoma. Classic presentation is hematuria. It's about 10% of tumors, and unlike renal cell, it's often multifocal, kidney, urine, or bladder, for example, or contralateral kidney, age a little bit older, but not much different from renal cell in the 60s and 70s. In terms of appearance, you could see single or multiple sessile filling defects that compress the renal sinus fat. You can see pelvic calocele irregularities, often stricture-like. You can see focal or diffuse mural thickening. You can see calocele amputation, and you can see tumor-filled distended calyces. Obviously, the latter is the easiest thing to see, and tiny strictures or tiny irregularities are the most difficult and are the most challenging for us. In fact, when transitional cells get large, it's not so much detection, but distinguishing them from a renal cell carcinoma, particularly a hypovascular RCC, from lymphoma, potentially from metastasis, and at times even from infection like XGP. Now here's a nice example. Often, if you look at early phase imaging, when TCCs are small, they're hard to pick up in the sense there are no perfusion changes in the kidney, there's no difference in the enhancement. And if you look at this case, only when you look hard, you notice some soft tissue density here, but the cortical medullary differentiation seems to be equal bilaterally on both sets of images. As you keep looking, and when you get to excretory phase, that area that wasn't all that impressive is now the destroyed calyx, tumor extending into the renal pelvis. And when you look at it, it's a classic example of a TCC. This tumor <clears throat> in the renal pelvis, this tumor destroying the renal pelvis, this tumor in the calyces. That's classic transitional cell carcinoma. Here it is when you take this into the volume rendering and you're going to MIP. You can see the pelvis, the destruction, the calocele abnormality, all the extent of all the stuff that's going on very, very nicely defined and very impressively shown. Transitional cell carcinoma. Another example, look at the left kidney. There's some faint calcifications and maybe there's just some thickening around stones. But then as you go to arterial phase, there's not a significant change in enhancement left to right kidney, but this renal pelvis area is concerning. And when you go down toward the later phase imaging, you can see the infiltration in the renal pelvis, those faint calcifications. And when you get to excretory phase imaging, you really appreciate the irregularity of the renal pelvis, the irregularity of the calyces. This was a transitional cell carcinoma. I made this point before, but just to remind you that MIP imaging is very valuable in looking at the calyces, whether it's papillary necrosis or TCC. It's also valuable for looking at the ureters and looking at small ureteral tumors or strictures. Same patient cinematic rendering, that filling defect in the renal pelvis, and then the destruction of the calyces very nicely seen here as well. So regardless of how we look at this, it can be subtle, and it's the excretory phase imaging that really gives us the very specific answer of what we're dealing with. Now, another example. Here on the early phase imaging, there's an infiltrating tumor in the left kidney, so it's not tricky like the last cases, and it's pretty impressively involving the left kidney. And then you also notice there's renal vein involvement. When I see renal vein involvement, I'm always thinking of a renal cell carcinoma. We typically don't think about transitional cell carcinoma as a tumor that involves the renal vein. But this is an example of a large TCC with direct extension. It's not vascular, but direct extension, a dilated renal vein. You can see as you look at the volume rendered views from the venous phase imaging, the infiltration of the upper half of the patient's left kidney. Here it is again just on the coronal views and again nicely shown on the axial views as well.
As we go to excretory phase imaging, the infiltration of the upper pole of the kidney, the loss of the calyces to the upper pole, the destruction of the upper pole calyces, as well as portions of the renal pelvis. Again, the MIP imaging is very valuable in this case. Now, sometimes the entire kidneys get involved. Here's early phase imaging, right kidney looks okay, but look at the left kidney. There basically is almost no function. There's an infiltrating process. Yes, you could think about renal cell carcinoma, but usually with renal cell, when it's infiltrating, there's more vascularity. Here it is on the coronal view. It's really the entire kidney, a little bit of distortion of the outline. There's no significant adenopathy, but there is a lytic lesion at L2. So now we're looking at a tumor that's infiltrating and going to bone. Still, you're thinking about a renal cell, but again, the infiltration needs to make you think about a transitional cell carcinoma. There's a little bit of function on later phase imaging in the lower pole, but most of the kidney is simply infiltrated by tumor. And here on excretory phase imaging, you really don't even see the calyces. The kidney is infiltrated. So again, infiltration of the kidney, I will think about a renal cell, but it's not the typical appearance of a papillary, okay? It just isn't, it's not the appearance of a clear cell. Could it be lymphoma? I guess lymphoma infiltrates the entire kidney, though usually the kidney is large, not normal in size relatively normal in size or a little small, you got to be thinking about transitional cell carcinoma, which this indeed was. I showed you that that patient had a lytic lesion in the lumbar spine. It also had a lytic lesion in the symphysis pubis on the right side. So we think about lytic lesions, we think about RCC, particularly clear cell, but TCC can do it as well. Now, the next tumor that we need to talk about, and I would say, is best defined as a great mimicker is lymphoma. Lymphoma, kidney, adrenal, liver, spleen are always a challenge because we often don't think about it. Unlike renal cell carcinoma, renal lymphoma is typically hypovascular and does not invade vessels. Early diagnosis and proper management result in a favorable outcome. So the key thing is thinking about lymphoma. Appearances unilateral or bilateral, more common bilateral, solitary or multiple masses in each kidney, nephromegaly without a focal mass. The lesions are typically hypovascular, not uncommon to see peri or pararenal space involvement, and adenopathy can be bulky. Here's a schematic diagram from an, an article we wrote way back when, large solitary mass, multiple masses, infiltration, infiltration in peri and pararenal space and bulky adenopathy. Typically five major appearances. And here's the article almost 17 years ago. Renal lymphoma usually occurs in the setting of widespread non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, typically B cell type. In more than one half of cases, renal and perirenal spread is detected at initial presentation. Involvement by Hodgkin's disease is much less common being seen in less than 1% of patients at presentation. So some examples, bilateral large kidneys with infiltration. You can think about infection, but it really doesn't have that look. You can think about amyloidosis, maybe a good thought. You could think about bilateral TCCs, you're not gonna have them so infiltrated and enlarging the kidney. A beautiful example of renal lymphoma. Here's an example of unilateral infiltrating tumor in the kidney, there's some normal kidney seen, there's compression of the renal vein. There's extension into the perirenal space. Another example, right kidney. This looks more closer to a renal cell, but a lot of it is exophytic into the perirenal space. We see the tumor extending. And then here it is again, just showing you very nicely. And this probably is a good example of a lymphoma simulating probably a papillary renal cell carcinoma. Here's an example with bilateral involvement, bulky tumor upper pole right, mid pole left. Yes, you can get bilateral renal cells. Yes, you can get bilateral transitional cells, but it's more likely going to be seen in lymphoma. Lymphoma does not always enlarge the kidney. Here's an example with multiple hypodense lesions infiltrating the entire kidney, but interestingly, the kidney is not really enlarged. Another example of perirenal space involvement Again, renal cell is not gonna look like this. TTC is not gonna look like this. Metastasis are not gonna look like this. This is classic lymphoma. 
with that perirenal space involvement. Here's another example, infiltration of the kidney, the perirenal space, the extensive periodic adenopathy, B-cell lymphoma. And here is the same case on the coronal view, showing you the full extent of involvement. Now, in terms of perinephric spread on CT, we think about lymphoma as a likely scenario. The another thing we think about, the number two, usually a little bit more focal, is melanoma. But there are other things from hemorrhage to urinomas to extramedullary hematopoiesis to retroperineal fibrosis to Ernheim chest disease. So there are many things that can occur in the perirenal space. But from an oncologic perspective, I'm usually thinking about lymphoma and melanoma. And here's just an example of lymphoma, perirenal spaces bilaterally, extensive infiltration, periodic region around the aorta. The kidney is infiltrated on the left, infiltrated on the right, just very, very impressive involvement. And here it is, another example of the same case, just showing you a little bit lower the involvement by the psoas muscles tracking down into the root of the mesentery. Very classic for lymphoma. And again, here's just some more views showing you again to remember infiltration of the kidneys, perirenal and pararenal, paraortic. You've got to be thinking first about lymphoma. And here's that same patient in the coronal view, literally sheets of tumor growing from the kidney, around the kidney, and in the retroperitoneum, and involving both the left and the right kidney, though, of course, the involvement is greater on the left than on the right side. Now let's look at a few other things, and we're going to do that, however, in part four. We'll take a short break and come right back and start talking with chromophobe renal cell carcinoma. See you then. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.